In 2015, Hungary faced an invasion unlike anything it had ever seen. Over 390,000 asylum seekers flooded across its borders in just a few months, creating a national emergency that threatened to overwhelm the country. Makeshift camps sprang up, sanitation collapsed, and resources were stretched to the breaking point. Hungary was on the brink of chaos, but in a stunning turn of events, the Hungarian government took radical action. Within a year, illegal border crossings had plummeted by over 99%. How did Hungary achieve what many thought was impossible? In the summer of 2015, a massive flood of asylum seekers crossed the Serbian-Hungarian border and descended upon the Kaledi railway station in Budapest. This wasn't just a migration, it was an invasion. Conflicts and instability in Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia forced millions to flee their homes, seeking asylum in Europe. And Hungary found itself on the front line. The sudden surge overwhelmed Hungary's capacity to process and accommodate the migrants, leading to a dire humanitarian crisis at its borders. Thousands of people spent days and nights in makeshift tents, waiting for their asylum applications to be processed. The situation was grim, with poor sanitation facilities and inadequate supplies of food and medicine. But for Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party, this wasn't just a humanitarian issue. It was a threat to national security and social cohesion. The arrival of these asylum seekers was perceived as an invasion. What steps did the Hungarian government take and what lessons can other countries learn from their experience? Prime Minister Orban decided on a hardline approach. One of the earliest measures was the construction of a border fence. In June 2015, Hungary announced the building of a 175-kilometer-long fence along its southern border with Serbia. This wasn't just any fence. It was a four-meter-high fortress equipped with razor wire, motion sensors, and thermal cameras to detect and deter illegal crossings. The effect was immediate and dramatic. Before the fence, Hungary saw an average of 274 daily arrivals. But as the migration crisis escalated, this number skyrocketed to an average of 1,500 arrivals per day in the summer months of 2015, peaking at over 7,000 daily arrivals in September and October. The influx prompted swift action, resulting in the erection of fences that effectively diverted the Western Balkan migratory route away from Hungarian territory. But Hungary didn't stop at physical barriers. They made several legal amendments to tighten their grip on immigration further. The government established transit zones at the border, essentially container camps that were heavily guarded. Asylum seekers were required to stay in these zones while their applications were processed. Many of them ended up being rejected outright. In September 2015, Hungary went a step further and amended its criminal code. Unauthorized crossing of the border closure became punishable by three to 10 years of imprisonment. The Act on Criminal Proceedings was also amended to include a fast-track provision, bringing defendants to trial within 15 days of interrogation or within eight days if caught in the act. A state of crisis due to mass migration was declared, prioritizing all criminal proceedings related to border crossings over any other cases. Between September 2015 and March 2016, there were 2,353 convictions for unauthorized border crossings. Hungary introduced a new immigration law on January 1, 2024, bringing significant changes for third country nationals. As a result, new applications from TCNs have been halted, except for those involving national interest residence permits approved by the minister. The new law also redefines residence permit types, including specific permits for workers and investors. Hungary reinforced and extended its border fence in 2024. The reinforcement of the original 165-kilometer fence included the extension of about 10 kilometers in marshy areas near Herzegsanto, where human smugglers had found new routes. The construction and maintenance of these border defenses have cost Hungary around $1.96 billion. A second fence was completed along the Hungarian-Serbian border, which is 155 kilometers long and 3 meters high. This second fence aims to strengthen the barrier against illegal immigration and enhance border security. The project cost the Hungarian government approximately $130.8 million. Did those measures actually work? Between 2015 and 2016, Hungarian authorities processed 54,586 asylum applications. The majority were either suspended or outright rejected, with less than 1% of applications accepted. This gave Hungary the lowest acceptance rate in the entire European Union. 
The following year saw an even steeper decline, with applications barely reaching 29,000, a dramatic drop from the 177,000 in 2015. However, illegal migration attempts continue, with over 55,000 border violators apprehended in the first half of 2024 alone. The Hungarian government, alongside Serbian authorities, conduct joint patrols to manage this ongoing challenge. Hungary has also modified its asylum policies, designating Serbia as a safe state and thus rejecting asylum applications from migrants who cross the border from Serbia. On the domestic front, these policies bolstered support for Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party. The tough stance on immigration resonated deeply with many Hungarians who were concerned about national security, cultural identity, and economic stability. This sentiment was reflected in the 2018 parliamentary elections, where Fidesz won a resounding victory, capturing 52.6% of the vote and securing 13 out of Hungary's 21 seats in the European Parliament. During the elections held in 2022, Fidesz once again won a majority and Orban secured his fourth term as prime minister. Can other countries adopt Hungary's approach or are they too excessive? First, let's address the critics. Human rights groups and the international community have lambasted Hungary for its treatment of migrants, pointing to inhumane conditions in the transit zones where basic needs were often neglected. The European Court of Human Rights has ruled against Hungary multiple times, citing infringements on migrants' rights and a lack of proper legal recourse for asylum seekers. The European Union has pushed for mandatory solidarity among member states. The EU proposed a quota system to distribute refugees across its member states. Hungary was supposed to take in about 1,300 asylum seekers under this scheme. But Orban, along with other Visegrad group leaders from Poland, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia, staunchly opposed these quotas, arguing they violated national sovereignty and that immigration should remain under national control. This led to a standoff between Hungary and the EU. The European Commission initiated infringement proceedings against Hungary, resulting in legal battles at the European Court of Justice. In 2020, the ECJ found that by refusing to take in any refugees under the quota system, Hungary, along with Poland and the Czech Republic, had violated EU law. Fast forward to a 2023 summit in Granada. EU leaders clashed once again with Hungary and Poland over new proposed migration laws. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban declared that Hungary would not support these laws, calling them an assault on his country's sovereignty. Poland backed Hungary, accusing Brussels of imposing its will on member states, especially regarding laws meant to address sudden refugee crises like the one in 2015. The fallout from this confrontation has broader implications for the future of the European Union. Hungary's refusal to comply with the quota system and its unwavering stance on immigration have exposed deep divisions within Europe over how to manage migration while balancing national sovereignty with European collective responsibility. Interestingly, Hungary's approach has set a precedent. Other EU countries have started to adopt more restrictive immigration policies, mirroring a general trend in Europe towards tighter borders and increased security measures. However, this issue is far from resolved, and the problem seems to be re-emerging. Is the immigration problem solved, or are there still steps to be taken? Over the last five years, Hungary has seen a significant increase in its number of immigrants. In 2018, Hungary was hosting 263,445 immigrants. Fast forward to the end of 2023, and that number has surged to 403,112. So, what's driving this spike? Despite Prime Minister Viktor Orban's tough anti-immigration policies and fortified borders, many migrants still cross into Hungary from Serbia and Romania. The number of illegal migrants intercepted in Austria, mostly arriving through Hungary, almost doubled in 2021. Desperate conditions in countries like Syria and Afghanistan drive migrants to persist despite heavy surveillance. Hungarian police have increased detentions of smugglers, and there have been significant incidents involving migrants. One major factor is the war in Ukraine. In 2022, a flood of people saw temporary protection in Hungary due to the conflict. That year alone, Hungary received 33,273 requests for temporary protection, with 29,847 being granted. Between February 2022 and December 2023, there were 41,049 requests and a staggering 36,717 were approved. Hungary stepped up in a big way during this crisis. 
However, there's been a dramatic decrease in the number of asylum applications in Hungary. Since 2019, asylum cases have plummeted by 94%. In 2019, there were just 500 applications, and by 2023, that number had dropped to a mere 31. What caused this sharp decline? The introduction of the embassy procedure in 2020, which made it extremely difficult to seek asylum in Hungary. Despite the European Court of Justice ruling that these laws violated migrants' rights, Hungary has continued to enforce them. So, while Hungary has seen an increase in immigrants due to the Ukrainian conflict, it has simultaneously made it nearly impossible for asylum seekers to gain entry. Do you believe other countries should follow Hungary's example and implement similar measures to tackle the immigration problem?